Hi there. What do you need for a really big television spectacular? Well, first of all, you need lights. <laughs> you need beautiful girls. <laughs> you need an orchestra. <laughs> Most of all, we need you. <laughs> Put them all together. And what have you got? You've got a mess. <laughs> Special guests this week, John Cleese and Lulu. Little ladies and gentlemen, and may I say welcome to another edition of Says Les. Get off fatty and let the birds on. <laughs> Firstly, may I thank Yorkshire Television for making this series possible for me, and secondly, to thank the wife and kids for making it necessary. <laughs> I am, of course, delighted to be back with our comedy show. After all, in these dark times, there's nothing <clears throat> like a good laugh. Well, there's nothing like it on this show. <laughs> the man's a bum. <laughs> Since the series of Sesles first started so many years ago, fan letters pour in at a positive trickle. Here's one that arrived this morning. <laughs> Lord Lothar. Well, speaking of that, oh, here's one that's just arrived this very minute, post haste. I'll read it out to you. This is the sort of thing we get, and it's the sort of thing that makes us so proud to be part of show business. It's from Miss Bernice Gosper Pickle of 43 Ointment Row, Gateshead Pier. It reads, Dear Mr. Dawson, for many years, I have suffered from acute insomnia. My nights of bed were a restless misery. The bags under my eyes were so big, it looked as if my nose was wearing a saddle. I had that treatment in Prince, Berlin, Beirut, Nepal, Rill, but to no avail. Just like our Gladys, and a nicer body never brought the day yet. That's very touching. And it goes on to say, but you, Mr. Dawson, have done more for me than any specialist. After watching your show for only five minutes, I couldn't keep my eyes open. <laughs> it makes it so much worthwhile. In court today, Paul Kay reporting. It was three months ago today that Leslie Makepeace Dawson was led into Wakefield Crown Court to face seven charges of bigamy, five of murder, and two of parking without lights. <laughs> Now, the so-called butcher of Chalken Kumhadi is free, found not guilty on every charge. Still protected by a blanket so the people will not recognize him in his new life, Mr. Dawson sets off to make a fresh start. For Leslie Makepeace Dawson, the three-month ordeal is over. philosopher and critic Lo So Fung Po, he said, Confucius, he rude and ignorant old man, but Confucius, he have very clever answer. 
He say, Knickers. <laughs> Look. Thirty quid. No. Forty quid. No. Fifty quid, that's my final offer. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hello, football. First, news of the draw for the third round of the FA Cup. Here are the teams and the draws. <laughs> draw, little man of one. Silk. <laughs> Mohair. <laughs> Birmingham City versus Cardiff City. Crystal Palace versus Wrexham. Derby County versus Chester. <laughs> Chest. <laughs> <laughs> Oxford United versus Bristol City. <laughs> rhymes with you know what it rhymes with. Big one, small one, one me. Port Vale versus Oldham. And you can hold them all, Bristol, because they're a child. Get to get. With the draw from the chest of the dog. You can't go. Can't take that away from me. <laughs> We've sacked the Jupiter of Northumbria. Aye, aye, aye. Victory is ours. Aye. Now that my hat is, what'll it be? Rape or pillage? Rape! 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 Yes! Rape, rape you are then! Uh. Right you are, my hat is! Come out, wench! Yes? <laughs>
to tell you something, Lulu. Yes. This is just great having you on the show. Care to join me later, baby? Well, unless you come in the park. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't think I can play the piano. To those critics, may I say, tish poo. <laughs> <laughs> because tonight, I'm going to make the piano talk. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How's things? All right, thank you. <laughs> We're entirely surrounded, Orson. Oh. Just you and me left, but we shall not surrender. By heavens, we won't. Let the crowd do his damnedest! Yes. What are they hit, Dawson? The mobile quartermaster stores, sir. Never mind. We shall fight off. By it, we will. This time, Dawson. The mobile nuffy, sir. Do your damnest, you great clad morons! We're British to a man! We shall never surrender! <laughs> what targets are left for them to hit, Dawson? There's only one, sir. The mobile toilets. <laughs> What a lot of tripe! Do you know something? What? <sighs> this place is driving me up the wall. <laughs> sir? Sure. I reckon there's how you and I have been in this trench now for four years. I think that you and I have been in this trench now for four years. Yes, sir. I like it. This trench now for four years. That's right. <laughs> I was thinking, like, is, uh, where was you born? I don't know. Where were you born? Where were you born? Yes, I was born in Holland Park in London, Wilson. Holland Park? I thought up and perhaps you come from south. No, I thought perhaps you came from the south. I thought perhaps you came from the south. That's right. Back up. Uh, oh. I think it's our cop one. I think that I've been shot. I think that I've been shot. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Buddha, he say, baby born under gooseberry bush by the pallid rays of morning sun. Englishmen say, stock bring the baby. Can you tell stock from Buddha? <laughs> Please, Miss Lowe. I remember you. You're the one who made my dreams come true a few kisses ago. perfume on a Georgian staircase. A snatch of song on a Neapolitan balcony that lingers on the night air. The touch of a hand in a scented bower. The echoing treble of a boy soprano in a hushed cathedral. Laughter that tinkles across a crowded room. These are the things that can evoke nostalgic, bittersweet memories of a lost love. Or rekindle a passion that lay dormant. Something like this happened to me when I first met the maiden who was to become my wife. It was at the Corporation Cleansing Department's dinner dance. <laughs> at the Quarp in Upper Mill. She was stood on her head in a corner, stuffing suet up a vicar's kilt. 
There was something about her. I found it after it was pickled onions. <laughs> oh, I know she wasn't much to look at. Nobody danced with her. I wouldn't say she was a wallflower, but she was stood in a bucket of bone meal. <laughs> and yet she was the woman who churned my blood into a cauldron of desire. I remember she had braces on her teeth. Every time she kissed me, she stapled my lips. <laughs> her teeth were in a bit of a mess. She had so many fillings, she had metal fatigue in her gums. <laughs> and her complexion wasn't very nice. She had so many pimples on her chin, her face looked like a box of Lego. <laughs> and yet that night, as I took her in my arms to the lilt of a Strauss polka, I felt a tingle run up my leg. She scratched me with her bike clips. <laughs> I held her close like a snooker rack. I kissed her on the ear and it blew a fuse in her hearing aid. <laughs> she was such fun to be with. The little things. The way she took her skirt in her knickers and... Hold her head under brewer's yeast and yodel sunny boy. That night I asked her for a date. She said, I've only got things. I said, you can work them. She said, I'll probably work you. It's the little things. That night I, I took her for a meal to a little restaurant. And I've never seen anybody eat so fast. When she drank soup, sailors stood up and she had an abandoned ship. <laughs> they used to put sparking plugs on the cruet. The horseradish was under starter's orders. I took her home in the car towards the, the moonlight shining on the black hulk of the Pennines. I had a little baby car in those days. I called it a baby car, it never went anywhere without a rattle. <laughs> It wasn't a new car, but it only had one previous owner, Lord Kitchener. <laughs> We've had a secret passage in the boot. And I looked at her as she slumped, that cheroot between her lips. I asked her for a kiss and she shook her head angrily. And I was hurt, so terribly hurt. And then I found that she kept shaking her head all the time. It suddenly dawned on me that her nose was caught in the windscreen wipers. <laughs> Suddenly we stopped for a moment in a lay-by. And she said to me, in a very soft, throaty voice, can you drive with one hand? My manhood stirred. <laughs> oh, yes, I cried hoarsely. Oh, yes, my darling. Of course I can drive with one hand. Why? She said, well, wipe your nose, it's running. <laughs>
Ah, sit down, please. Thank you very much. Now, what's the problem? I've got a headache. Congratulations. When's the little fellow due? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I've got a headache. Yes, I heard what you said, my good man. I'm not blind. <laughs> you mean deaf, don't you? <laughs> Certainly not. My eyesight's perfect. 2020. Now, uh, when's the happy event? How long? No, you misunderstand me, Doctor. I'm not having a baby. <laughs> I've got a headache. <laughs> oh, a headache! Yes. Ah! Oh. <laughs> good, good. And whereabouts is it hurt? <laughs> In my head. Ah, oh, dear, it's worse than I thought. Well, um, a simple operation should clear this up. Operation? Well, we have to stop it spreading. <laughs> Don't worry, we doctors know what we're doing. Can you give me tablets? Tablets? Yes. Hadn't thought of that. Well, uh, it's not as much fun as an opera. So if you, if you want tablets, all right, I'll put you on the pill immediately. <laughs> on the pill? Yes, uh, just take one after every headache and you'll be perfectly safe. Well, if you say so, Doctor. There we are. Just take that round to the post office. And if you want to, you can take, um, take a couple uh, every morning about 20 minutes before you wake up. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and trouble, Doctor. Oh, hang on. I can give you a lift if you want. I'm going your way. Well, that's very nice. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the matter with your leg? Indigestion. Terrible. Hey, for weeks. <laughs> Sizzler's stars Marion Montgomery, Brenda Arno, and John Cleese.